Good evening. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Uh, this regular this workshop meeting of the Score ISD Board of Trustees is being called to order. The time is 531. Tonight's Pledge of Allegiance is going to be led by Michael Pettis, who is an eighth grader from Sunridge Middle School. If you'll all please stand and join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Michael. And item number three. Where's Mr. Escobar? Yeah, where is Mr. Escobar? It's going to be Christy. Oh, it's Christy. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, Ms. Oh, Borrego. We have board honors that's going to be led tonight by Ms. Borrego. Good evening, President Najera, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Espinosa. My name is Lucia Borrego, and I'm the Chief Academic Officer for the district. And it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's recognitions. If you'll please join me, step down to receive our honorees. Tonight, we will honor Team SISD teams that advanced to the Destination Imagination State Contest. Destination Imagination is an educational program that challenges students' creative problem-solving skills and higher-level thinking. SISD students shined at the regional and state events and showcased their science, technology, engineering, and math expertise in addition to their talents in improvisation, writing, project management, communication, innovation, teamwork, and more. So we're very excited tonight. We're going to be honoring elementary, middle, and high school. Let's give all these kids a big, big round of applause. The teams will be recognized by school level. SISD's Destination Imagination winners are for elementary, in the elementary category, from Herschel Antwine Elementary, Zachariah Carrasco, Amber Montes, Reagan Dion, and their managers are Andrea Carrasco and Angie Peña. <laughs> Next, Luhan Chavez, Tegan Osborne, Christian Duran, Fernanda Sanchez, Brendan Lewandowski, Kayla Dickerson, Alyssa Paredes, and their team manager from Luhan Chavez, Amanda Paredes. <laughs> team members from O'Shea Kelleher, Gail Dominguez, <laughs> Melina Salgado, Karma Norman, Itzel Yuoa, Alejandra Arellano, Tina Valero is the team manager for O'Shea. Elementary students, teachers, please join the board and the superintendent for a photo. Parents, um, please know that you're welcome to stand up here and take pictures, but we will also be posting these in our Smug Mug, which could be found on our webpage.
So make sure that your certificate doesn't cover your face. There you go. And you hold on to it. And look at Acavius first, and then he'll move out of the way for your parents, okay? Keep smiling. All right, let's give our elementary destination imagination winners a big, big round of applause. Now on to our middle school winners for Destination Imagination, our middle school winners. From Colonel John O. Enzer Middle School, Alejandra Alvarado, Tyler Burnett, Paola Estrada, Regina Gallegos, Andrea Moreno, Keenan Stevens, and their team manager, Yolanda Lascano. From Rafael Hernando Middle School, Melanie Roman Nassif, Aileen Gonzalez, Joel Garcia, Adrián Retana, and their team manager, Sergio López. From Paso Norte School, the winners are Devin Rubio, Kimberly Torres, Jasmine Gallegos, Alina Kamaludin, Jordan Lopez, Jesus Galarza, Isael Olivas, and their co-managers are Ramon Bautista and Vanessa Colon Payan. The winners from William D. Slider Middle School, Leilani Rosales, Lauren Villegas, Jimmy Aguirre, Anait Aguirre, Natalia Fernandez, and their manager, Sonia Kern. Next, we have Sunridge Middle School team. Sunridge, you hear a lot of excitement in the audience, who earned honors for creativity, teamwork, and innovation at the state academic tournament. They are the only team in the region to advance to the Destination Imagination Globals Finals in May. They, they will compete against the top creative groups in the world. Congratulations to Sunridge DI team. And when we say the only team in the region, we're talking all of El Paso. So big accomplishment. And the following members are Savannah Grajeda, <laughs> Paris Chacon, Robert Torres, Adam Ramirez, Miguel Portillo, Lisbeth Rodriguez, 
and their team manager is Gabriel Aragon. <laughs> Students, teachers, please join the board and the superintendent for a photo. All right, Acavius will take the picture and then they'll move out of the way. So parents let Acavius take the picture and then we'll let the parents take the picture. And of course, all of Acavius' pictures will be on Smug Mug on our district web page. Keep smiling. Let's give our middle school Destination Imagination winners a big round of applause. And now, and now for a high school destination imagination winners. From America's High School, Savannah Hernandez, <laughs> Nandini Parik, Samantha Wilson, and their manager, their team manager, Virginia Gardea. East Lake High School, Alondra Morales, Cassidy Gaitan, Darian Booth, Jeremy Guerra, Joel Sierra, Victoria Ramirez, Vicky Zuolaga, and their team manager, Angie Gonzalez. From El Dorado High School, Russell Acosta, Amaya Flores, Isaac Soto, Mia Gonzalez, Riley Miner, and their team manager, Antonio Casturita. From Mex, from Mex High School, Yannette Mescheider. I got it right. All right. Yannette Mescheider for Mex High School.
From Montwood High School, Rebecca Cotter, Mara Medina, Miriam Solano, Julianne Garcia, Marlon Ramirez, and their manager, Jamie Vega. And the other manager, Christian Rodriguez. <laughs> High school students, teachers, please join the board and the superintendent for a photo. Hang on a little bit for your parents. Let's give our high school destination imagination winners a big round of applause. This concludes board honors for this evening. Thank you. At this time, we're going to take a short break so that we can set up for the workshop. Awesome. And the time is 5.50. Okay, we are back in session now. The time is 6.02. And we're going to continue with our board workshop item number four, a budget presentation. Fun, fun, Mr. Reza. Thank you. It's only money. It's only money. There's some members of the board. Can you hear me? No, yes. you can. Okay. There you go. Yes. So tonight uh, we start a series of budget workshops for the purpose of certainly having the board review uh, the proposed budget for the for the Socorro Independent School District, uh, as well as for finally for the adoption and the adoption of the tax rate. So I have about 28 slides for you, but I'll probably go quickly on some of those. And then the reason I did that is to provide you a sense of maybe a review. You're able to look at some of the information that I'm providing you. So. What you have here is the agenda for tonight's uh, presentation. We'll look at the funding assumptions that we're using for the general fund. We'll look at certainly some of the estimates, and I just want to remind the board that these are estimates that will change as we get more up-to-date information with respect to taxable values, ADA, and so forth. We'll look at legislative uh, proposals, bills that are of interest for the school district that are going to impact our future funding. We'll look at the budget uh, cost drivers currently for the proposed budget. We'll provide you a glimpse of the budget by function, give you a total amount, and then we we'll certainly look at uh, the agenda for the workshop, for the next workshop, which will be uh, on April the 23rd. So what you have here is uh, the major components of our revenues. We have local revenues, we have state funds, we have federal funds. 
So the pie chart represents what we project to earn this year in 2019. And what you'll see is 71% of our revenues are from the state. And that's kind of a drop from past years where we kind of have about 75, 74% coming from the state. Um, and then you have then local revenues, primarily in the source of uh, local tax collections. And that's followed by our federal funds, that's SHARs, indirect costs, and our uh, impact aid. So the assumptions that we're using to start off the budget process with respect to local revenues, we're gonna start with the same tax rate only for the, the purpose of the fact that we know that things are changing in Austin. We need to see what's going on there before we start recommending any kind of changes. So uh, no change at the current time. You'll see that our taxable assessed valuation that we're, uh, I guess, uh, assuming at this point is an increase of 5% to the tune of $10.3 billion. Now we will get our preliminary values in April and then we'll use that as a source of uh, making, uh, uh, I guess, an assumption of what our certified values will be because we'll adopt our budget prior to the re receipt of our certified value, which will come in July. So our, our, our collection rate that we're gonna use is 99%. And just for informational purposes, we'll generate about $1,024,000 for, uh, for each penny of taxation that we incur. With respect to state funding, the, the major variables are our average daily attendance and the values that are set by the state, which is from the Comptroller's Property Tax Division. And as you can see, uh, we're assuming an, eight, an average daily attendance of about half of a percent. That's kind of the same as the current year, and it's lower than prior years. Our, our, we're looking at weighted average daily attendance, which is our, all our special population, an increase of about 0.59%. And so also, if you see, like the state values, they're coming in at $10.2 billion. That's an increase of 9%. So when it comes to state funding, if your average daily attendance, percentage-wise, is not keeping up with, or is, is not as high or higher than your values, you're gonna start losing state money. And what you'll see is um, uh, that uh, when we go over this analysis. So the state has two tiers of funding. We have the basic allotment. This is current law. Our compressed tax rate right now is 92 cents. Uh, 92. And what we, a uh, basic allotment is $5,140. So that we get 92% of that. And then right now when you use the cost of education index, we get, it comes up to about 5,210. Then you add the special populations and so forth. So again, I'm, I'm giving you this information for reference purposes because we'll be looking at what's being proposed and changes to, to state funding. Now under tier one funding, as you can see, this is where we're projecting for next year. We're projecting a total of $306 million and you see the various special populations as well as our regular program allotment. Now what the state does, it backs out the, the district share. So that $94 million is our compressed tax rate at 92 cents multiplied by the values that are set by the state. And then what's remained is the state share, that's tier one funding. So as you can also see, these special populations have a spending requirement. If you look at technology, uh, career technology, we have to spend 58% of that amount that's listed there. Now you look at other special programs, they have certain uh, different percentages. Comp Ed is 52%, uh, Gifted and Talented is 55%. Now there's a second tier which is used to maximize funding for school districts and it's based on anything over your compressed tax rate. You generate additional revenue and this is what's called the golden pennies. There's two levels. Level one is a, a golden penny. It's $106 in yield. And right now uh, after any, anything after six pennies is what's called a copper penny. That'll give you about $31.95. That, that golden penny are, is what's called the Austin yield, just for your information. So currently, uh, what we're generating is we're, we're generating uh, about $33 million in tier two funding because we're, at, we're accessing all the six golden pennies. So our, our current tax rate for MNO is 98 cents, a little over 98 cents. Our compressed tax rate is 92 cents. So those golden pennies certainly generate a lot of revenue for us. Now, our current revenue estimates, if you look at that, you'll see that there's a decrease in what our current revenue uh, our budget is we're looking at about a $1.8 million decrease. And the reason for that is very simply, on the state funding side, our average daily attendance percentage increase is a lot lower than the state increase in values. So we're projecting an ADA increase of about half of a percent. The state values are increasing 9%. And unless we do something about the tax effort, we're gonna start losing money. Why? Because the state considers us to be property wealthy. 
technically speaking, wealthier than we were in the past. Let me rephrase that. So we're still property poor, but we're getting wealthier in the sense that our values are going up higher than our average daily attendance. That's what I wanted to kind of communicate to you. So I apologize for that. You'll also see a decrease in our federal sources. Uh, after we adopted the budget last year, uh, we were notified by TA that our indirect cost percentage, which was 6%, was reduced to 3%. So yes, that's why you see a decrease in our federal uh, revenues for the month. So what you're looking at right now is a $377 million in total revenues with uh, no increase in the tax rate. Just for your information, general fund re revenue for the last six years, you'll see uh, kind of uh, the fact that we have the surpluses four years ago. Last two years, we've incurred some deficits. And currently, we're projecting a deficit of about $8 million. Uh, so we're always tracking these expenses and revenues. These amounts will change as we get closer to the fiscal year, but just for your information. Then finally, it shows our unassigned fund balance, uh, which is not our total fund balance. Our total fund balance is about $119 million. There are other, there's the inventory there, there's committed funds, there's contracts. What's unassigned, it's what's available for the board to use at your discretion. So you'll see that right now we're at $104 million. If that deficit that we're projecting comes to fruition, it'll go down to $94 million, which is still over about 90 days of operating expenses. So well, let's look at these proposals by, this, by uh, the legislature. Three of importance uh, from the Senate side. You're looking at Senate Bill 2, it's been in court. <clears throat> so there's a, what it does, it limits tax collections by an entity, whether it be a school district, a, uh, a city, municipality, to 2.5%. Anything above that is subject to a recall, uh, I should say a, a TRE, so to speak, an election. So that's something that, that's, that's being proposed. We also have Senate Bill 3, Nelson, which proposes an increase for all teachers and librarians in the classroom of $5,000. And then you're looking at Senate Bill 4, Taylor. That's their house, that's their actual finance bill, but it's, uh, it's really a shell of a bill. It proposes changes like increasing the basic allotment, but it didn't say how much. It proposing changing the tier two uh, yield, but it didn't say how much. It's really there as a placeholder as they start negotiations with the house, when, whenever the house, and I think the house approved um, their, um, their proposal uh, last night. So what we wanna focus on is House Bill 3 from from, and by Huberty, that proposes a major overhaul of the uh, state funding formula. And what it does, and there's a lot of items here, so I'll go quickly to some of those. I'll just let, allow them to, for you to read them and so forth. It, 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 uh, it increases the base allot allotment by $890, from $5,140 to $6,030. It also requires school districts to reduce their tax rate by four cents or 96%. It recreates Chapter 41, which is property wealthy districts, and, pro and Chapter 42, which is property uh, 42 <coughs> districts, and recreates them in the Chapters 48 and 49. It repeals the gifted and talented allotment, the high school allotment, the staff allotment, the cost of education index, and, it's, and it repeals the spending requirements for comp ed, gifted and talented, and bilingual education. So we're no longer required to spend 52% of this particular program. Just keep that in mind that it's not our intent in the future. It also expands career and technology allotment to the grades six through eight, but that wouldn't be for next year, it'd be the following year after that. The bilingual allotment would increase by 0 0.05 for kids in a dual language setting, and for those students who are non ELL, ELL would also receive allotment increase also. There'd be a dyslexia allotment created and equals to 0.1 weight. Now, the, with respect to comp ed, <coughs> There, the basis of funding for content would change. Instead of it being free and reduced lunch applications, it would be a criteria um, that would be based on the census blocks. So I'm not gonna go through all this. You can certainly read that. But my guess is it might certainly um, probably reduce some of the funding for us. I just think that it's gonna be different and it may not generate the same amount of revenue that we're getting with respect to free and reduced lunch programs. But we'll see how, what, what comes of that. There's also will be a pre-kindergarten program for all four-year-olds will be required for on a full day basis. And there'll be waivers for those school districts that, that, have, um, that don't have the space. The transportation allotment will now be funded on a per mile basis, not on linear density. And also transportation funding will be included for homeless students, work-based CTE programs, and dual credit. 
There's also the an education uh, educator effectiveness allotment that will, be, that will be allocated to schools if they want to, to provide funding for um, those uh, and then uh, schools that have maybe high need, so to speak. And so it provides an incentive program for, for teachers who want to work in what's kind of considered uh, high need uh, campuses. And the statutory minimum salary scale, scale will be increased by about 17% for each scale, each step. And then with respect to the golden pennies, um, tier two, uh, it decouples the Austin yield, so it's now 160% of whatever the basic allotment is, or 96 percentile, uh, whichever is higher. So that comes out to about $96.48 per WADA. Then after that, the copper pennies go up to $48.24. The bill maintains that the, the maximum m and tax rate is still $1.17. Uh, currently, it's our projected that the uh, Socorro's rollback rate would be $0.96 cents plus 4 pennies after that. So it would be a dollar. Now, the bill would require school districts to seek an independent efficiency audit prior to asking for a TRE. And it would be a district expense, and it would have to be at least three months prior to the election. And then finally, uh, it provides the commissioner with the authority to make school finance adjustments to resolve any unintended issues of this legislation, subject to approval or review by the Legislative Budget Board. So what does it do for us? With respect to our tax rate, our tax rate, it's 98 cents. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's 98 cents, so we would be compressed 96 cents. So our tax rate would be forced to go down to 94.23 cents. And then the allotment would be only $5,919. So what, we, what would happen is that we would get uh, not the total basic allotment and we would have no golden pennies in tier two funding. Now keep in mind that school districts that are $1.17, like Isleta, uh, El Paso, would be forced to go to $1.09 as a part of the compression. Now there's some other things in hospital three having to do with recapture and compression, but I'm not gonna get into that, okay? So what does that do for us? So this is information that shows the additional funding under hospital three for surrounding school districts. And what you'll see is we have the lowest amount uh, for this particular area. Uh, with respect to El Paso ISD, it's something that I'm assuming, but I think it's pretty close to what they're expected to get. So you'll see that because of our low m &O tax rate, in a sense that this district's being penalized because we're getting a very low amount if this bill comes to fruition. So when you look at the differences, they're pretty substantial. For us, I mean, uh, and this is on a per student uh, weighted average daily attendance basis, uh, I would say that for us, we would generate about $50 million, but we'd have to reduce our tax rate, so we'd lose about $4 million, it'd be about $11 million gain. I'm hearing Asleta would generate about $27 million. I'll pass so probably a little bit more. So as you can see, if things stand the way they are, we'd be at a severe disadvantage. So what does it mean? It means it would provide less funding and provide pressure for us to provide competitive salaries with respect to other school districts or to fund uh, necessary positions that are needed because of the growth of our school district. Now currently, uh, last night the House passed their budget and they, they're moving it over to the Senate, the Senate's still working on it. So at some point in time, the two chambers will have to get together and reach compromises. So there might be still changes to House Bill 3, but as it stands right now, we would generate a lot less revenue per student than our peer school districts in, in, in this particular region. Now, for any reason, if, it, if, if both chambers can come to an agreement, which I seriously doubt, I think they're gonna come to an agreement, then we'd probably have a, little, a lot less funding with respect to um, what might come from House Bill 3. Uh, so, um, so it's important for us to keep that in mind, that unless we do something about tax effort, we're gonna generate a lot less revenue per student than we are with respect to other school districts. And we will be at a disadvantage when it comes to compensation or positions that are needed for our departments. Now, we'll see what happens. We're gonna be in a wait and see what goes from here. Now, what's in our budget currently? Currently, we have a 2% general pay increase for all our teachers, nurses, librarians, speech therapists. We have a general pay increase for all other categories at 2%. We have additional instructional positions due to growth of some of the campuses. Uh, also additional positions for special ed program. We're funding the staff at Cactus Trails, which starts this year. Additional salaries, textbooks, transportations for the other college high schools at El Dorado, East Lake, Pebble Hill. We have funding for all the incoming lap, uh, laptops for the incoming freshmen at all our high schools. Funding for grade level transitions at Antoine and Paso del Norte. Also, we're also purchasing 20 school buses 
and additional amounts for utilities and so forth. So we've also had reviews of our department budgets and we've provided some additional funding over and above what their initial allocations are. With respect to the operations, we've added additional $400,000. The infrastructure services, we've added $308,000. Fine arts, we added $276,500. Uh, instructional technology, $55,000. Athletic department, 170. dollars And the other departments, they got almost uh, $390,000. Now, we've also allocated some additional money because of athletic officials. And we're going to probably need athletic travel because of the split for the 5A split and the 6A split. So we've allocated additional $525,000 because it's probably going to come. So this is our current budget at the Sands. It's about $405 million. Uh, that's about $11 million over our current amended budget. As you can see, uh, there's, there's some negative balances. With, with 51, we've rolled over about $3.8 million for the roof repairs, and that's why you see a negative uh, balance there. With respect to data processing, uh, we had originally money uh, allocated there for leases, but we moved over to function 71. So this is the uh, just uh, showing you where we're at. Next time we meet, you're going to get a detailed budget, as we always provide, for the board showing you uh, by line item budgets for the departments as well as the campuses. Now, currently, what's not in the budget? We don't have uh, the department requests for additional positions. That's not on the budget yet. We're kind of waiting and seeing. Uh, there was a lot of requests, and we're going to take that. Uh, we'll probably review them in the next couple of weeks to see what can be added to the budget. Uh, we don't have stipend review changes at this current time but we certainly do certainly intend to add that and substitute rate changes or strategies to reduce teacher um, absences. We still haven't have that in the budget. There's still discussions we're gonna be doing, but we do anticipate putting some funding for that. We just wanna remind the board that we're still making changes to the budget. We're reviewing positions. We had a lot of, we have a new school that we're opening. We're doing transitions for Antoine and Paso del Norte. So. We're making sure that positions have been properly funded for. We don't have vacancies that maybe don't need to be vacancies. So we're kind of working in, in that regard. So, so currently, and I, I don't want people to kind of like get upset here or get freaked. It's just currently um, as we stand right now, because we haven't done anything with the tax effort. We just want to see what happens. Uh, you're looking at a, a deficit of about $28 million. That's going to change. We just want to make sure to see what happens, so to speak, in the sense that uh, We'll see what the legislature has to offer. But what you'll see is House Bill 3, if that comes to fruition, we're going to have to come, have to come and, and talk about tax effort and generating some additional revenue. That's the only way we're going to be able to do that. I think what we need to keep in mind is that we've known that this system kind of rewards tax effort, but we've been judicious to make sure that we keep the, the taxpayer in mind. But this bill is really um, kind of uh, making us realize that we're going to have to do something about um, generating more revenue, and that might entail going to, to the voters and, and asking them, or, or not the voters, but, but certainly doing something about the maintenance and operation tax rate. Now, are there, are there any questions? Uh, I just want to show you that this is the agenda that we have for the upcoming budget meeting on the 23rd. Uh, we'll be going over the detailed budgets. We'll provide you the detailed budgets for the general fund, child nutrition debt service. We'll also provide you workers' comp, health care, pitch shop, Title I. And we'll give you an update on the legislative um, um, action at that time. Are there any questions with currently with, with, uh, with our budget at the stands right now? Not at this time. Ms. Teresa, uh, we will also at our April 23rd budget meeting, if we could get additional numbers about a possible salary increase for the different percentages that we've done in the past to show what it would cost us. Yes, ma'am. We could certainly provide that information um, at that time. And, and if we have information of surrounding school districts, we can provide you that information as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mr. Race. We appreciate it. Thank you. Even, even though it was kind of depressing, but, but we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 4B, Socorro High School Reconstruction and Budget Implications. Mr. Einton. I hope you're more cheerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't repeat what I said over there. <laughs> Good evening, President Nahu, Dr. Espinosa, and members of the board. Tonight here, uh, we are going to present some 
options on Socorro High School. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it over to our architects here in a minute, but let me just give you a little background and we'll use this building as an example. This building is 11 years old. It is 107 square, 107,000 square feet. It cost us to build it a little over $11 million. Our current bond has a 50,000 50, square foot addition to it out front. That's gonna cost the same amount of money. Half the cost of what this was built. That's what we're facing in not only the state of Texas, but most definitely in El Paso is the, the rising cost of construction. And although the news might be a little bit depressing, but I, I don't think it's all that bad. I think there is some uh, light up at the end of the tunnel. Uh, will we see the $191 a square foot that we built Pebble Hills for? East Lake, $176 a square foot? Or Purple Heart, $134 a square foot? No, we won't see those prices anymore. We'll see the $250 to $300 a square foot cost for construction. Just because all of the school districts in the area, and I'm preaching to the choir, there's $1.5 billion worth of work out there just between the school district. And El Paso is, is a small sub-market as far as subcontractors. General contractors, I have no cons qualms with, but when we put proposals out and bid things and get numbers on them, we're only talking about one or two uh, contractors that will be able to bond a hundred and a hundred plus million dollar project that we're going to be talking about so if that's depressing I'm sorry but we'll try to get out of here because writers are playing in one hour and ten minutes so we'll try to get out of here um, tonight we have VLK architects I'll let them uh, come up and introduce themselves but what we're going to show you is three options, three plans, with, with some budgetary numbers associated with them. What we've got, the current plan, which is everybody's wish list, you know, the large auditorium, uh, all the CT, all the fine arts and all that. And then we're gonna show you some options that could get us back down a little bit. Uh, we're not too far off uh, in the 2000 and 11 bond, is that right? Yeah, that's the last bond. Uh, we were able to save $37 million. Uh, this one, we're gonna try our hardest to save that amount of money. There are savings already. I can tell you that there is savings already, but the savings are in land cost, selling the property that we sold. So we do have some savings available. Uh, and, and we are tracking that. Uh, but we've got one project under construction, Cactus Trails, and hopefully this summer we will start multiple projects and then we'll be able to see what our costs are gonna be as far as constructions go. Uh, overall, we're fine with the bond. Uh, but we need to look at Socorro High School. And we're, we're not only looking at Socorro High School, we're looking at the addition to this building, we're looking at all of our buildings to see what we can do uh, for cost savings, implications, and to uh, get the best and what the voter vo voted for. Promises made, promises kept. That is our goal and that's what we plan to do. But we do have some uh, options that we wanna present tonight and I'm gonna turn it over to VLK Architects, Ken Hutchinson, and he can introduce his team and I will jump in to answer any questions also. Thank you, Mr. Ryington. Good evening, board, superintendent. Uh, with me tonight is Clinton Shiva. Clinton is principal in charge of our projects here at Socorro. And so 
we want to give you an update and then talk about some of the things that Tom mentioned. And so our agenda is to review the current design, uh, review the budget, uh, look at some scope and budget reconciliation uh, options on the design, and then allow you guys to have a discussion with us about what the possibilities are. So the current design uh, features 2,500 student capacity for the new school, features next generation learning spaces and general academic, so Coral Early College, Health Profession Academies, and the Career and Technology Education Areas. Incorporates and fully renovates and expands fine arts and athletic areas of the existing campus. Site improvements feature two multi-sport practice fields, a track and field event area, band practice area, softball stadium, designated bus staging area on the campus, and provides an additional 651 parking spaces for a total of 1,026. In addition, it provides for future additional campus expansion to meet instructional and or demographic needs. This is Alameda. North Rio Vista is here. The proposed design of the campus lays out here. Staff and visitor parking with parent drop-off lane here at the front of the building. Staff parking here. We have separated student parking into a lot here off North Rio Vista. This is the band practice area here. Buses will access the site and come in. There's also staff parking and the bus stacking is here along with additional staff parking. The main entrance of the campus from the public viewpoint is here. The student entrance is on this side here. Band practice also is next to the fine arts. This is the fine arts staging area for loading. The new softball field is here and has the correct sun orientation for player safety. New tennis courts are here. This is the existing baseball stadium to remain here. There will be some renovations to the football area. And then these are the two new practice fields I spoke of, as well as the field area in this area here. There will also be the community basketball courts will be in this area here that can be used by the students and also from the surrounding community members here. The, site, uh, the floor plan, if you recall, the campus administration with the principal, bursar, different folks in here, conference rooms and things are here. This is the SEC here on the first floor. Athletics, this is the pit which will be renovated. The existing building is here. We're gutting out all those areas and putting all new sports specific locker rooms and everything in here. Weight room, JV and varsity football and storage here. Competition gym, auxiliary competition gym here and a wrestling room here. Coming down a main corridor, you enter into the fine arts and cafeteria area. This is the cafeteria, kitchen, black box theater, renovated auditorium, which will have a thousand seats from its current seat number of 1,234. A renovated stage that also has a fly loft, renovated band area and color guard area, and then different rooms along here for support areas such as percussion, ensemble rooms, community room, and then uh, piano and choir is here, orchestra is here, and another ensemble room here. Coming further, once you get into this area of the building, this is the bottom of the academic tower, which has the student services entrance, the assistant principals, counseling guidance. Special resources are here. There's some general academic classrooms as well as teacher workroom and lounge area here. Over here, this is all CTE programs over here, various ones. Uh, kitchen, culinary, different elements, architecture and engineering, and this is automotive, diesel, barbering and cosmetology, and the students enter here. On the second floor, uh, SEC and HPA are in this area here. This is the upper half of the pit, the upper half of the black box theater, upper part of the auditorium, biomedical science, junior ROTC, some band elements here. Then this is the first floor of the tower on the second floor. This is general academic classrooms, which is science, math, foreign language, social studies with collaboration areas, library here, and then CTE in this area here. So these students are all blended together. And the third floor is general academics on the third floor of the tower. From Alameda, this is the main entrance. This is the addition with choir, orchestra, different elements. This is the new fly loft addition on top of the existing structure of the stage. This is SEC and HPA here, and the athletic addition with the auxiliary gymnasium here. This is an aerial view, this is Alameda. 
Parents will drop students off here and exit back out. There's parking here for staff and visitors as well as here. The two practice fields are back in here. Baseball's there. There's the community basketball courts, softball stadium, tennis courts. The bus parking will be in here. And there's the student parking here with the band practice and the academic towers there. So budget review. In the bond, there is an allocation for the total project cost, which includes a construction cost, uh, architecture fees cost, geotechnical investigation cost, uh, material testing during construction to make sure that the contractor is putting in the right materials. All those elements like that were in this bond project cost that was set at $135 million. The allocated bond construction cost, at, which is in this number, was $115 million. Uh, along with our selection, the district also has selected Buford Thompson Construction to come out and be the construction manager and do the construction. They have been involved with this on the project and doing the estimates and working through it. And currently where we are is we have a construction cost estimate of $132 million, $278,526. We have had numerous meetings with Buford Thompson Construction. We have gone through the exterior and interior wall systems of the building. We have vetted out the finishes, the mechanical systems, plumbing systems, lighting systems. We have met with subcontractor trades here in Mr. Ironton's office, along with Buford Thompson, and worked through different systems with them. And this is the result of those early efforts to get the price down on the project as much as possible. We're charged with bringing you a project which gets close to that budget, more than this. And that's what we're fixing to go into now and talk about. So part of what we want to do in saying out of looking at, okay, how can we reduce the project, get the scope, and ultimately get a project that could be phased in and you could realize the current design is in working with Mr. Ironton, who was determined to achieve the master plan ultimately is what we want to do, not tear everything apart and start over, but to achieve that master plan that folks have seen. So in our alignment option one, we still have a school that's a 2,500 student capacity school. It features the next generation learning spaces. It incorporates and provides cosmetic upgrades to fine arts areas in the existing campus and incorporates and provides cosmetic upgrades to athletic areas of the existing campus. The site improvements are the same. You still have the two multi-sport practice fields, the track and field event area, the band practice area, softball stadium, bus staging, and the additional parking to get to 1,026 spaces. It provides for future expansion areas for fine arts and athletics and full renovation of existing fine arts and athletics areas to align with the current design in the future through phase construction. And then ultimately it provides for future additional campus expansion to meet instructional or demographic needs. So in this design, we would not be adding on the JV varsity and the auxiliary gym in this area here. We would still have the wrestling gym added on, and we would not have the addition for orchestra and choir and piano. Those would be housed and kept in their existing athletic areas and in their existing fine arts areas. The remainder of the site stays exactly the same. You still have a new softball stadium, which we need to do to facilitate the expansion of the high school. The band pad is here. The student parking area is here tennis courts, the visitor parking drop-off, everything here, the two practice fields, and the field area there to support track and field events. That's all the same. In the design, you can see these spaces all stay the same. There's SEC, admin, the cafeteria, all of the CTE stays the same, as well as the academics in here. In here, this would just be cosmetic upgrades to the fine arts area. No renovation work to the stage, no renovation work to the auditorium, all those elements. They would stay as they are now. We would go in there and dress them up cosmetically and take care of any major issues with the air conditioning, heating system, plumbing systems, all that such as that. Same thing with the athletics. This is basically a cosmetic upgrade of these existing athletic areas, improving the lighting, improving the look and feel of everything, fresh coat of paint on everything, this would be the location of the new wrestling room. Once it's built, as you come back and phase construction in the future, you don't have to do anything to that room. We would plan around that space. That's the reason we're locating it where it is, so we're not wasting those tax dollars by having to alter it in the future. The existing auxiliary gym would be here. It would remain. It would be reused. We would just incorporate it into the design there. 
on the second floor, you still have the SEC HPA area, the upper level of the pit, the upper level of the auxiliary gym, and this is the same areas that they are now, the auxiliary, the upper areas of the fine arts. The tower here, CTE in the library is exactly used the same as it is in the current design. As is the third floor of the tower, which is still general academics, math, science, social studies, English language, arts, and foreign language. We work with Buford Thompson to get a price on this, which I'll give in a second. You can see here, this is the view from Alameda. The goal is, is to give you the same look and feel in this first phase of construction. The difference is, is you don't see the auxiliary gym addition over here. And where this wall here is back some, normally it would tie in here, it's back some, but still has the same logo elements on it as in the current design. This is an aerial view of the site. You still have all the same site amenities that I discussed. But here you can see we're leaving room in the future for you to come in and do that fine arts edition right here. Nothing would have to be taken away undone. That would go right in here. And the athletics edition would go in this area here in this area. So you just come back in a future phase or later in the, this project potentially, and I'll discuss that on how to get there. All right, and with this, the alignment option one is estimated by Buford Thompson to be $116,151,000. And while we know that's not at the 115 million, we felt like it's a number and an option that we need to bring to you to have discussions with you as we move forward on the design of the project. We have another option, option 1A. Again, it's a 2,500 student capacity high school. It features next generation learning spaces in general academic, SEC, HPA, and the CT areas. It incorporates and fully renovates the auditorium and stage of the existing campus and includes a fly loft. It incorporates and provides cosmetic upgrades to the remaining fine arts areas of the existing campus. It incorporates and provides cosmetic upgrades to the athletic areas of the existing campus just like the previous option did. The site improvements are the same. It's still the practice field, all the parking, the band area, and the increase in the parking lots. It provides for future expansion for fine arts and athletics and a full renovation of the remaining fine arts areas and athletics to align with the current design. And it provides future expansion of CTE for automotive, diesel, and barbering programs to align with the current design. And it provides all the future expansion as well. So in this option, there would be an addition here for athletics, just like in the previous option. An adoption, an addition here for fine arts, just like the previous option. And then an option to come in and add on automotive, diesel, and barbering. Because what we've done is, is now we've renovated the auditorium and the stage and put in the fly loft. So the layout of the school is the same. This is the same as the option one alignment option. This is still the uh, auxiliary gymnasium. Now this auditorium and stage are fully renovated and all these other spaces remain the same as the current design. And then these spaces here receive cosmetic upgrades. The second floor is the same. Again, you've got the full renovation here of the stage and auditorium and the same design on the tower itself. Option this looks just the same as the option one with the exception is now you can see the fly loft here added onto the existing building, which is there. And you can see here the automotive diesel and barbering addition section here has been pulled off, but we will stay out of that site area if that's the way that board chooses to go so then later on you can come in and add that component directly into the building at a later time and the cost projection on this from Buford Thompson construction is hundred and seventeen million five hundred and fifty one thousand and twenty two dollars So to summarize, across the top, the alignment factors are that all three options provide a 2,500 student capacity school. They feature next generation learning spaces. They all feature the exact same site improvement areas to the campus. And this one provides for future expansion as well as these. Then option one, the difference is it incorporates and provides cosmetic upgrades to fine arts areas of the existing campus, as well as the athletic area 
and that provides for future additions to fully build out those spaces and renovate the rest of those areas. The difference with 1A is, is we would incorporate a renovated, fully renovated auditorium and stage into those areas. And then later on, you could add on CTE, the fine arts, and the athletics. Now, part of what could also be done, and you can see the respective prices there. As we move forward on the project, we can create add alternate bids of each of these sections. So as in the previous report you just have on school finances, things change here, things change and stabilize in the local economy, continue to grow. The board and the district administration will have the ability to potentially, as the project moves forward, to incorporate some of those other alternates and build them out. And how we would do that is, is our schedule is, is to send this to Buford Thompson for them to begin pricing out to subs officially in the month of July. They will take time to price that. We would have them bid those ad alternates, get the pricing on those, and then we can write into their contract a period of time where those ad alternate prices will be held and the district can later on come back and potentially add those elements into the project. But this gives you a way either during the construction now or in the future to do additions and meet the needs of Socorro High School and get the current design. And so thank you very much. <coughs> Questions? Ms. Rodriguez. Mr. Iington, in looking at the information, you, you shared with us just before the, the presentation was made how much additional the, the cost of construction is going. Um, if, if we're looking at the possibility of going with alignment option one or one A, at some point in time, we're still looking at the, <coughs> the things that we said we wanted to do for Socorro High School. What, in looking at how much more things are now, if we're going to do this in the future or in years to come, what would we be looking like? What would we be looking at potentially and I understand right now we're, we're, we're just kind of looking at things and, and we wouldn't know the cost, but if we're looking at a difference of $16,000, give or take, uh, yeah. $16 million, give or take, um, between current design and, and alignment option one, what is that difference going to look like in the future? Good question. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I told you what it's done in 10 years. Exactly. You that's know, so, that's my concern. And, and I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball to see what it's going to be like. I have heard that, and I'm not recommending this, I've just heard it, that some, some of the school districts are coming out with uh, uh, maybe delaying some of their projects. But I don't think that's a situation uh, that we would want to look at because if you delay, prices are still going to go up. And can I, can I say it? I mean, we're over 47,000 students as of last night, right? We're growing. I don't know. I, broke, I busted your bubble. I'm sorry. I'll probably. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not going to change. I mean, it might. You know, prices, and I, I used to chart it years ago, and I can go back and chart it again, that El Paso, when I came out here, uh, when I moved out here in 03, prices were below the state. And there was a line to where that eventually caught up with the state cost and stuff. And now it's, it's, it's going up. Uh, will it level off at some point? I'm hoping. Now, I'm also hoping that some of our neighboring school districts might be done with some of their larger projects. And not to mention one that has issues with, you know, uh, only getting one bid or the bid on it, uh, you know, which is not anything that we would accept. Mm -hmm. uh, doing construction manager at risk, we have a little bit of control on that and we can and 
hopefully get better prices and stuff and get uh, people out there. Uh, you know, $16 million between any of those proposals is not a lot when you're talking about a $130 million project. But it's, it's money. It's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we've got savings, like I said before, but our savings has been in land because we're just now getting into construction. And, and I've, I think I've stated it before uh, to the Bond Accountability Committee and maybe to the board that our hopes is that there are going to be multiple projects started this summer for the district and then we can start seeing where the cost of construction is. Uh, and when I say multiple projects, I'm talking the 16 multi-purpose room, the addition to this building, this project, Montwood High School, and eventually Americas and El Dorado. Thank you. Mr. Arrington, I'm sorry if I'm missing something, but our current budget for this project is $135 million, correct? That is everything. That's inclusive of fees, as Mr. Hutchinson stated, land purchase, and fixture furniture and equipment. Okay, Those so three what would items added up, and our brick and mortar cost was the 115. Okay, so this 132, does that include everything? The fees and no. the land purchase? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. So how much more are we looking at? That's the brick and mortar piece. No, we, we've right. got separate numbers for fees that should compensate for that. And the uh, fixture furniture, we've got monies in there for that. That shouldn't change too much. Fees would go up a little bit because we're building more buildings. But I've got a separate line item in fees that should cover that. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm missing it. If yeah. we have 135 million and this project is at 132. It's like another 20 million on top of that for land and everything else. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. There was 10 million in there for land and what's the difference? So then that would add the 20 million to that. Yeah. We should have to add two of them to the list. Maybe I'll tell you the one that we have to each okay. one of them. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I've already reduced some fees in order to make that $115 million. I've already lowered some of the cost of the fees. I had $15 million in fees and $10 million in there for fixture furniture and equipment. I think we could reduce some of those numbers to add to the brick and mortar cost. And that's where the 115 million came from, out of 135. Okay. Other questions, not, not, Mr. Abe? Um, Mr. Arrington, how many square feet are like East Lake and Pebble Hills? East Lake and Pebble Hills are over half a million. Okay. How many square feet is Socorro High School today? Today, it's over a half a million. How many square feet are these three options? The current design is over five, half a million. Okay. And then the other two would be less than that? A little less than that because, because we're not the building gym. the buildings until future. The, the 521 or whatever the number is, over half a million would make it comparable. Okay. How many, that's the master plan. Okay. How many square feet are we salvaging on fine arts and athletics at this point? Oh, gosh. Around 167,000. So about 250, 260,000 feet is actually what we're building new and then we're remodeling 
about 167,000. Yeah, and we come up with $132,000 in construction costs. I, I still think that's high. Well, it's it's a cement risk. You know, we're going to be watching those numbers. Uh, the projects that we saved in the 2011 bond were cement risk, and that's where we saw most of our saving. Cactus Trails is a competitive sale proposal. We won't see any savings on that. The only savings that we will, I'll bring to you whenever that closes out is what's ever left over in the contingency and it's not used. Yeah, and, and the savings there was up front because we, we did yes. seal bid proposals. Yes. So there was the savings yes. there up front. Um, personally, I don't think, we cannot give Socorro High School anything less than they don't already have now. I mean, they have stuff now, but it's old. The intent here was to do something new. I think that not doing the uh, athletic facilities is a non-starter because that was a large discussion when we had the people touring the facility and walking around, and that was a big support from the community. Not doing some of this fine art stuff, if you don't do the fly loft now, you're never getting back in that deep into the building to establish new walls and, and raise the roof and do those types of things that they need to do. So that's a non-starter also. Um, uh, I'm wondering, are there any other areas that could be cut? Do we have any additional programs here that we don't have now that we don't need. Um, I've heard you mention a couple, but are there any other square footage we could cut that would not impact what we have now and what we promised? Just the ones that the CTE programs that we have mentioned is the ones that we have come up with initially. Yeah, we can't get rid of diesel mechanic. I mean, diesel, automotive, and those things, that's a big call. That's well, a diesel big is the, Diesel is the new program. Automotive is existing. Diesel and barbering is the new programs. Um, at this point, the over budget you suspect would be in the neighborhood of $20 million? In round numbers, yes. And we're hoping there'd be savings to mitigate that. Yes, sir. I don't know what the board thinks, but I think we either go with what we say we're going to do. It's a high number, and we try to get some savings. After all the effort and what we wanted to do for that community, I don't want to go back there and say, we're going to do some of it now, and then we're going to do some of it later. I agree. No, I agree. I think we I need agree. to do it. Promises made, promises kept doesn't mean we're going to keep them in the future. Yeah. Like and, and, and gentlemen, you got to save us some money here because you heard the previous presentation. There is no money to be had, but we also don't want to let the community down. And so this is going to impact other things. So please save us some money. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mr. Mahara, I've got another question. Um, Mr. Arlington, we were talking about um, the other projects that we have coming um, and, you know, there, there's an option here to the possibility of holding off on some of the construction and doing it later. Are there any other projects that we have that we might be able to do that? Yeah. Hold off and maybe not do something as big and hold off, you know. Well, come up, it came up in cabinet, of course, when that's that why you don't, when you don't miss, miss it, when you miss Say a again. meeting, Say when you again. miss a meeting, where is he? When you miss a meeting, you get thrown under the bus. We said we, we didn't have to build a hectares. Well, he well, already has a place. <laughs> and, and in all honesty, what a, what a that's... <laughs> that's a non-starter. <laughs> that, that's, that's something that I was even thinking about. I, we got, we, we've got money in there for a warehouse. Maybe, but we have options. Think, you know, as we, we have options. Yeah. That's why I say in the past we've had some savings and we yeah. do have some right. options. We have we some options. This. I mean, uh, we just need to be very frugal yeah. on this. I'm not happy about the budget, but yeah. we need to be very frugal as we go forward, and we do need to deliver what we said we would. Um, but we, there's still a lot of projects where there's going to be some nickel and dime savings, and um, quit saying out loud where the savings are because we're still negotiating prices on. Well, that. that's why I don't like yeah, to don't give say out that. numbers, yeah. and you know. But I, I don't like to give out, no, I mean, I like to give out 135 million right. and then how it's broken down, but, you know. I, yeah. I feel like we're all feeling the same thing, that providing an equitable education for our yeah. school, high school, our flagship school, takes priority over some of the other projects that if we could look at our possible savings are moving those to future expansion instead of doing this to Socorro High School. Well, we're, we're also, I mean, we're looking at, yeah. we're looking at alternates and things on Americas and El Dorado. 
and Montwood, you know, so we've, we've kind of taken it and, and narrowed it down and kept it within the scope, you know, so. Uh, what? You said Montwood? What? Yes, Montwood. <laughs> you don't get your green roof. <laughs> No, Are you any good at driving a bus? <laughs> I'm scared right now. We're still working on that. No, I'm sure I can't. Well, I see, I understand the option, I understand how the price increase, but so Crow's the, on the flagship, and we don't want to come back four or five years again, then do another bond, well, then add on to it. So I, I would go with the first option, current and design, and stick I with agree. that, and look at cost somewhere else. This is the flagship. And like I said, promises made, promises kept, and we could cut costs somewhere else. Well, yeah. I, I agree. I, I, I totally agree. And, um, you know, I would uh, look at the current is the master plan. If we look at alignment number A1 and, and, and design everything as it was the current and then possibly look at bids as ad alterns and stuff, and then we can make some decision. Otherwise, you know, we're going to come up with $20 million. When you break it up, you're going to add cost every time we break mm -hmm. it up. Exactly. So I think we need yeah. to go with that and, and call it Additional a day. And fees they need to find us some yeah. more savings if they can. And, yeah, and that's, I think, on it. where I was going because if we wait to add on later, yeah. the cost may even be higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I throw out something? Too uh, late. It's too late. Well, no, it, it, it was a part of the. We, we talked and we came. One of our initial design was an 850 seat auditorium. And we said thousand. See, what's, so, the, what's the cost difference between eight hundred and fifty thousand? It's not going to be. It's not going to be a lot, but if it's comparable to the other schools, it's cut in half, and we're looking at six hundred and fifty seat auditorium from a thousand two hundred and thirty-four. There are possibly some savings. Yeah, but is it, is it going to be a, that significant of amount of an I amount? We'd have to we have to start looking at that. But if you're looking the comparability to the other school district, I mean the other schools, you know, East Lakes 660, Pebble Hills is 660. The new one from Montwood is going to be 600. They're all in that 600 range, and we're still looking at a thousand seat auditorium. Question, Mr. Anderson. So as you mentioned about the auditorium. So if you were reduce it, it's at a thousand to eight what's East Lake again? Six sixty to six fifty, six sixty or and Pebble Hill is about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you were really, really if you were to go from a thousand to about six fifty at Socorro High School, would that give you all the opportunity to Okay, you made it smaller to add another room, possibly a dance room. Could possibly do that. That's what I. That's what I was thinking. Uh, so, if you make it smaller, then here's you could possibly add another room, a dance room, or what? What? Whatever we may need. A choir. A qu say it again. Choir. Dance. we had added those things already. I don't think the dance, I think, I think it already, yeah, the dance room, it has a dance room, we had added but it could. We had added some of those things okay. already, right? This so. is, this is the band hall right now. Uh -huh. Which is about two times the size as our other schools. Other schools. It's about 10,000 square feet where the band hall's at East Lake and Pebble Hills, I think, are around 5,000. So, but this is the auditorium. So, if you theoretically maybe come in there and, and reduce that to the 650, right. you know, it might be that there is some space to be gained. A choir room, a band, a, a dance yeah. room. We just have to look at it. So, why is a band room 10,000 square feet? Because it's existing. And we make that smaller, compatible to, to well, the other we, schools? Well, we proposed that, I think. Oh. Would that be a savings yeah. also as well? In, yeah. In, in the current design, we actually... May you please speak out. into the mic? Thank you. In the, in the base design, the current design, We carved it up so that band is here 
and we've got color guard dance right here. We've already taken that space out and made them a room. And it has locker rooms and storage, and then we also worked in prop storage for the band for all their props for halftime activities and things in here. So those elements like that we've already done and pulled those into the plan. I just uh, I, I called Miss Grosse, the assistant superintendent for our high schools. I said, hey, how's the, because the, I've seen it before, I said, how is the dance room, how's the choir room, and she mentioned it is pretty small compared to East Lake and Pebble Hills. So if the auditorium were to make, be made smaller, then one of the rules room possibly could be, hey, now you got a nice little dance room or a choir room or whatever is we decide, correct? That's always a part, okay. okay. Okay, but I thought we added that already. Right. That's what I, I was thought thinking. that was part of the master plan. Yeah, but it is. It's, it's added. Mm -hmm. So they're there already. But that addition could get a little bit smaller, possibly. You're not going to save enough money. <clears throat> No. Well, it's, it's, I, I, I don't believe it's going to be that significant of a difference to... Well, the auditorium is a high dollar or high volume, high cost, acoustics mm -hmm. and lighting and, and everything. That's, that's a very expensive space. So reducing it from 1000 to 650 or whatever the number comes out to be, there's going to be some savings there. It's not going to be 20 million, but it might be a million. But we got to start on. It. I don't, you know, don't quote me on figures. Yeah, <laughs> the one thing that I do not want to compromise is producing, because one of the, I think, proposition 1A had a reduction of uh, automotive and stuff like that, uh, and. I wouldn't want to reduce any program that is going to directly impact on the education of the students. I mean, the other ones, cosmetics and stuff like that, we can cut here and there, but we need those programs to stay competitive. Any other questions? Gentlemen, thank you, Mr. Arlington. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, you are not any better than Mr. Rick. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nice try, Tom. Ms. Garina, would you like a Chick-fil-A sandwich? You know, because that's all you're going to get. <laughs> If there's no better business for this board, we are adjourned. The time is 7.07. .07.